Scandal rocks the world of college basketball, so why should you care? Because investigators say three local players are tangled in it, and the FBI is calling the shots. Near record warmth, and yes, another weekend with rain. How this could affect your weekend. How would you feel if your grandchild was competing in the Olympics? Well, just ask this local family. As a goal for the goal. Amazing grace. If it's involving courage or inspiration, a role model is grace. How a 14-year-old Marietta girl inspires Olympic athletes. But first, tonight we have new information about the man police say terrorized Metro Atlanta drivers by pulling up next to cars in his SUV and randomly shooting people. The attacks were two nights ago. He was caught yesterday after a dramatic car chase. Now, some of the details about the suspect. His name is Michael Calloway. He just got out of prison. He also had multiple warrants out for his arrest before this shooting spree. Ryan Kruger has been looking into his past. And, Ryan, I guess there might have been some red flags that could have tipped police off here. Well, I will say, Vinny, all those warrants he had, none of them were for violent crimes. He certainly has a long rap sheet, that's for sure. But up until this point, his most serious charge was for burglary. That's why he was in prison. Tonight, he is facing a laundry list of charges from multiple jurisdictions and the most serious, killing a young father. Y'all killed my nephew on his birthday. The rampage of random shootings terrified the metro area. All day, residents were on the lookout for the stolen silver SUV that Michael Calloway was allegedly driving. Thursday afternoon, undercover police found that SUV. Only this time, they say Calloway tried disguising it. It looked like somebody just took a spray can and tried to cover up a car, yes. Shortly after, individual came from a residence, got into the vehicle, and led Georgia State Patrol on a fairly high-speed chase. New warrants obtained by 11 Alive show Callaway was driving in the wrong lane on Moreland Avenue, going more than 100 miles an hour, even driving through a nearby parking lot with pedestrians walking. Thankfully, no one was hurt. The three shootings took place early Thursday morning over about a three and a half hour period, starting in Atlanta and ending in Decatur. That's when police say he pulled up next to Nick Bankston, shot him in the head while his pregnant fiance and kids were still inside the car. Investigators are still trying to figure out a motive. It appears to be completely random. Now, according to the Georgia Department of Corrections, Callaway was released from prison less than four months ago. Investigators tell me that he might be connected to some other crimes in the area. They're still trying to piece all of that together, Benny. Yeah, the puzzling part, again, they still have no answer as to why here, right? Yeah, that's really the scary part, uh, is that it appears it was all random, as police said. Driving up next to cars, opening fire, really quite scary. Now, I think that, that part of it makes it even more scary. Thanks so much, yeah. Ryan. All right, let's check in on some of the other big stories tonight in our speed feed. Police investigating after they found explosives inside a home in Marietta. Crew spent the day going in and out of the house. It's on Bayberry Drive, and tonight we've learned all the explosives are out. The scene is clear. No one lives in that house, though, and police aren't sure who the explosives belong to or why they were there. Tonight, a 17-year-old high school student is in jail after police say he brought a knife to school, was then sent home, then stabbed his father and his brother. His name is Max Cardenas Garcia. He's charged with aggravated assault. Police say he got into an argument with his mom, and then this happened after he was sent home. He then ran upstairs and attacked the rest of his family. Tonight, no word on how the father and brother are doing. There are people on Twitter that um, are angry because they can't pay for food. They can't pay for uh, the groceries. Yeah, they're angry because right now major, major outage is affecting thousands of customers of BB&T across the nation. They can't access their own bank accounts. Many of those customers report they can't even access their paychecks today because those accounts are locked. Some good news tonight, though. 24-hour phone service and ATM service is running, but there's no word when full service will be restored. The bank says they will reimburse any fees you get because of that outage. And Kennesaw State University is extending their application deadline because of an ACT mishap. Here's what happened. Apparently, FedEx lost 200 ACTs out of Cobb County. So now the students have to take the test again this weekend. That will delay their entire application process. The folks 
Out at SAT said they're still hopeful the test will turn up at some point. And tonight, there is new meaning to March Madness. Yahoo Sports is reporting that financial documents from a federal investigation uncover details of an underground recruiting scheme operating in the shadows of the NCAA, and all this impacting highly recruited college basketball players, including at least three from here in Georgia. The expense reports and balance sheets are linked to former NBA agents and their associates, revealing cash advances and other expenses for prospective college recruits, ranging from a free lunch to tens of thousands of dollars in payouts. Players from powerhouse programs have been implicated, calling into question their eligibility to play for the championship next month. According to the report, Wendell Carter from Pace Academy, who now plays for Duke, and Pebble Brook's Colin Sexton, who plays for Alabama, may have violated NCAA rules by letting agents buy them lunch. Malcolm Brogdon, who played for Greater Atlanta Christian, is named because his mom had a $64 dinner with an agent. He's now in the NBA, last year's Rookie of the Year, and untouchable in this NCAA probe, but his alma mater, Virginia, may still be on the hook. Today's revelation is just going to be part of a three-year ongoing FBI investigation that has already led to charges against several college coaches in connection to the corruption scheme. So a huge scandal in college basketball has been uncovered after a massive investigation by who? The FBI. So the FBI investigated at least 20 schools, 25 players, monitored thousands of phone calls over the course of 330 days, and yes, they got their indictments. Now, here's my question. How many lives were saved by this massive FBI investigation? Zero. How many headlines did they get? Thousands from coast to coast. Now, do you think that maybe the FBI needs to rethink its priorities here? Do you think maybe the FBI could have used some of its seemingly bottomless resources to investigate someone who posted on social media he wanted to be a professional school shooter? Or maybe the FBI could have actually followed up on a specific tip about someone who was a specific threat in Parkland, Florida. If they did, and they stopped the shooter a month before the massacre in Parkland, do you know how many headlines the FBI would have gotten? Zero. But do you know how many lives would have been saved? 17. And tonight, local Olympic athlete Chris Kinney made his bobsled debut with two runs. Ron Jones was in Stockbridge with Chris's grandfather and friends to watch Chris compete. Well, of course, it's Friday night, the perfect night for a party. But this time we're talking about an Olympic watch party for Stockbridge's own Chris Kenny, And it's happening right here in his grandparents' home. And they've invited us in. Let's go check it out. Total elation as family and friends celebrate the accomplishments of Stockbridge native Chris Kinney. Really proud, you know. Kinney and his team are hoping to qualify tonight in the bobsled event. He's waited years for this day. It's that his dream always, he want to go to the Olympics. His grandmother Terry Kinney and grandfather Jack have supported him since he was a little kid in all of his sporting events and endeavors. They're glad to see he's representing the red, white, and blue. It is honored to represent your country. Jack Terry and family are hoping they qualify tonight. I give a fingers crossed. <laughs> they did. Now this is day one, their first run. They still got another chance tomorrow to make it better. We'll see how it all unfolds. All right, good stuff. Thanks, Ron. Tonight, a local sheriff's office announced special gun training for teachers. And you all had a lot to say about it online.